Hey guys, uh, none of you really know me. I'm Tony. I, uh, I've done a few little videos on YouTube, not a lot. I, um, I wanted just to come on today to share something with you and show it to you. Uh, some of you are going to agree with it, some of you won't. But it's okay, it's just what I've come to understand. It's what's been shown to me. Um, I'm going to draw and kind of give this to you, and I think most of you will get it. Uh, it's spiritual. And we're going to start out like this. In the beginning was darkness and void. And God said, let there be light. And it was. And he separated the light from the dark. This is where we get our divide sign today. Mathematics. A little division there. Okay, so we just light and dark. This is when God basically created a world of duality. Everything in this world has an opposite. Okay? So we have light and dark. We have love. We have fear. We have good. We have evil. The Bible says, that God says, I am the beginning. I am Alpha and Omega. Still duality. Everything has an opposite. Up, down, left, right, in, out, hot, cold, yin, yang. Um, the Bible teaches us God's a trinity. We have God the Father, which should be up here. God the Father, then we have God the Son, which is Jesus, then we have God the Holy Ghost, and these three are the Trinity. There's an old saying that's as above, so below. Well, darkness down here is a Trinity also. We have Satan, we have the false prophet. And we have the Antichrist. And they are a trinity. Here is the Star of David. The Star of David is a lock. The soul of man is here in the middle, in this lock. This soul of man is the divine spark. It's the spark of imagination. You see, in creation, the first six days were God showing us his imagination. Look at the universe, look at the heavens, look at the stars. Look at the trees, look at the birds, look at the mountains, look at the beauty, look at the desert, look at the jungles. It's an incredible imagination. Okay? So the first six days of creation was God's imagination. Well, Adam was given imagination also. Adam had to name all the birds and animals and things that God created. You see, Jesus says, if you think of a sin, you've committed it in your heart. It's because you imagined it. The Ten Commandments are ten things you are not to imagine. For example, uh, do not imagine having any other god. Do not imagine worshipping false idols. Do not imagine forgetting the Sabbath. Uh, do not imagine lying, or cheating, or stealing, or adultery, or fornication. You see, if you don't imagine these things, they can't manifest. They'll not be. You see, if I spend the entire day imagining lying, I'm going to be probably a liar. If I spend the day imagining adultery, or fornication, I'm going to probably commit adultery or fornication. You see, Jesus says, a man is as a man thinketh, okay, as a man imagines, okay? 
Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. I'm going to speed this up because I don't want to hold up too much time on the basics. But this is it. In the beginning was darkness and void. God said, let there be light. And it was. And he divided the light from the dark. You see? Then we have our trinity. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Then there is Satan, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. And the soul of man is here in the middle. The divine spark. Imagination. Now, now that we understand opposites, let's go over here and look at Jesus. So, Jesus is humble. He's service to others. He's self-sacrifice. He's uh, unconditional love. He's unconditional forgiveness. Well, what would be his opposite? Greedy. Selfish. Love of self arrogant when Jesus says let no man deceive you for me me my understanding he's telling me not to deceive myself he's talking about my ego me mine I think I feel I want you see the ego is the opposite of the personality of Jesus Now, if this is the ego, and this would be the anti-Christ, this is the opposite of Christ, anti, okay? Well, the false prophet, he tells lies about the future, see? So, for me, this would be the little voice in the head that says, <clears throat> yeah, man, you, you get that, and boy, you're going to be you're gonna be tough, or you'll be this, you'll be... You know, so rich, so smart, the women love you. Oh, man, get all that money. You'd be so happy. Get that plasma TV. Get that Corvette. Get this, get that, get all that stuff. Get it, get it, get it, right? See, he's the ego's little yes man. He strokes the ego. And here is your problem. The false prophet and the ego, if they control your imagination, you serve this master. Jesus says you cannot have two masters. You will love one and hate the other. You see, you cannot serve God and yourself. You see, you can't serve God and yourself. Okay? Now, this symbol actually makes up what's called seven. It's uh, seven, it's six on the outside, one in the center. You see, this is like the six days of creation and the day of rest here in the middle. Well, seven's very symbolic. It's a um, God, the pattern appears to be one surrounded by six. Seven days of the week. The Sabbath is the one, the other six days of the week surround it. There are seven bowls, there are seven vials, there are seven seals, there are seven chakras in the human body. Um, seven is, I think, the number of completion, I believe is what they call it. Um, so, I mean, this is very symbolic here, okay? Um, I'm going to keep it simple right now. Draw it for yourself, understand it. There are 20 verses in the Bible that uses the word imagination. Uh, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, God destroyed the world the first time because all the imaginations of men were evil continuously. You see, uh, then uh, it goes on to say later on in the Bible that as in the days of Noah, so will be as the end of days, or the coming of man, the son of man. Well, all the imaginations of men are, are pretty evil now, I would think. Um, you see, imaginations are seeds. You see, and that you can build on that. And so, our imaginations are extremely important here, okay? I mean... God gave us imaginations to use, but for a beautiful way. Um, a false idol, 
a false idol is a big fat ego. It's like, what is it, a legend in your own mind kind of thing? You know, I'm so powerful, I'm so rich, I'm so smart, I'm, I'm like Obama, right? You know, I do what I want to. Yeah, okay. Well, got something coming, buddy. Um, I don't know, this is just a real quick understanding of it. It's duality. Everything in this world has an opposite. You, you, you see, and this is the other thing. If I wanted to control the world, you know how I would do it? I'd control people's imaginations. See, TV plants seeds of imaginations. Strokes the ego. See, ooh, look at that car. Look at that, how good you look driving in it. How that man looks. Oh, look at that woman. Oh, look at that. Oh, why well, he picked up that blonde. Look at that. She loves him because of the car. You see, it strokes the egos. Um, Jesus says, if you think of a sin you've committed in your heart. Well, if you're watching some movie and you're like really into it, and I mean, there's things that are going on that you should not be imagining, <laughs> but you are. Um, I think, if, and I'm just pointing this out. I'm just pointing it out. Take a look at it for yourselves. The ego, this is why Jesus taught washing of the feet. This was to destroy the ego, to humble ourselves. You see, the ego ain't gonna let you do that. The ego's like, I ain't washing your dirty feet. Are you kidding me? You're crazy. Your feet stink, man. Wash your feet yourself. That's the imagination. Alright, I'm gonna give you more later, but uh, that's enough to chew on for right now. Y'all have a good day.